Hello there, everybody. Welcome to Movies Are Real for the month of July 2K23. I almost said 2K25. <laughs> Somehow I'm looking. Oh, because this movie trailer that we're watching. Sorry, this is already off the rails. <laughs> uh, this is George. I'm bringing, really going to back in and I'll explain myself why that was 2K25. Ryan Lance, how are you doing? I'm here. I'm ready to create some content, or as I like to call art. Uh, uh Carrie Lyle, <laughs> what is up? Um, I am become death, maker of uh, shit. Uh, <laughs> so anyways, listeners, there's, we're, as we usually do, there's a television playing some nonsense when we record this podcast, and right now there's a trailer for a film that I have no idea, but it released in 2005 <laughs> and 2006, and it started with Chicago 2054, and it looked exactly like Chicago now. It, so. it said, it said <laughs> for, by... From the short story by Ray Bradbury, so I oh. assume it's ve it's very nice. Oh, the CJ on these monsters is something. <laughs> it's a big fan. Mm -hmm. Well, hello there, everybody. Welcome for <laughs> July. You know, it's the big time summer, uh, summer movie time. Actually, probably the biggest month of the year for movies, I would say. Uh, yeah, by a, by a, by a country mile. I don't think there's anything that bigger than this. Um, so yeah, we got some fucking films to talk about, <laughs> and uh, I usually have some. I don't. Is there anything that is not that, you know, stops us from going into those list of movies. Did anything interesting happening in the movie world other than a lot of money was made? Um, there's a lot of people not working right now. That's true! <laughs> I think we were, the strike started last time. Oh, the writer strike, the actor strike. The I, and the actor strike started now. Um, and, you know, uh, apparently uh, there's a lot of rumors of stuff being delayed. Oh, I believe um, it. Oh, even from this year, right? Delayed from this year yeah. because actors can't promote, promote it, it anymore yeah. and that's the rumor is doom will not release this year do you need um, media is media that necessary i tell you what i'm a pr guy sometimes i wonder about my own job <laughs> that's useful. i mean useful. I, I get it but listen there's a, a lot they want doing to make a lot of money you gotta have it's getting timothy you got you gotta have florence pew on a hot one <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> true right exactly that's that's what you gotta do that's that's what's gonna make dune a billion dollars anyway speaking of movies uh, Insidious, The Red Doors, the first movie we're going to yeah, talk about, baby, baby. um, Insidious, uh, there have been four movies up until this point, mm -hmm. the last one came out probably, Carrie, you know, I, I was going to guess, 2018, I think, okay, that's about what, right, what I found, so this came out at the beginning of the month, and what I find crazy is, I feel like this had no marketing for it, but I, it's made a shit ton of money, it is now the most profitable Insidious movie, hell yeah, for something that, like, I saw no advertisements for, and like, it's true. I don't try to watch um, trailers um, unless I like to see them in the theater, ideally first, unless it's something that I'm super hyped for. So I wasn't like, oh, I gotta see the series the Red Dwarf trailer as soon as that drops out. And like, we see a lot Carrie of scary Lyles. We, see, we see a lot of scary movies, and none of them showed Insidious the I Red Door. And crazy. that's insane. It's true. Like the only reason I know is because Carrie likes Insidious. And I, um, but yeah, it blew it out of the fucking water. Uh, it's the main insane money. Patrick Wilson, directorial force to be reckoned with. Uh, we love that guy. <laughs> uh, and as I, and speaking of that, directed by Patrick Wilson, the first film directed by Patrick Wilson, starring Patrick Wilson, uh, with an original song by Patrick <laughs> That's Wilson. That's a triple threat right there. <laughs> um, yeah, where do we start with this? Um, it takes place like... Uh, it's been 10 years. Ten it's a direct years. sequel to two. Mm-hmm. Um, families. What I like, what I like, where this movie starts off is, you know, a lot of times when you have these like horror movies and like the family goes through like all this horrible stuff, they they're like, oh, we're so happy and we're closer together. <laughs> oh right, right, right. But when this movie begins, like, oh yeah, we got divorced yeah, because of like how horrible <laughs> of, of the circumstances this everything was. Traumatic. Like this. Yeah. this movie is so dour. It's so funny. Yeah, it's a real bummer. Yeah, <laughs> and like, and like, I kind of love it for that. Yeah, where it's like, oh, we're not. It's not like been all good. It's like, oh, we're separated. I'm like a weird, bad, <laughs> distant dad. Yeah, well, because uh, Patrick Wilson and his son Dalton both had, if you remember at the end of Insidious 2, they both had their memories wiped so mm -hmm. they wouldn't remember the events of the astral projection. So in the 10 years since Insidious 2, they've just been grappling with this feeling of emptiness mm, that they have because yeah. they know something's wrong, but they don't yeah. know what it is and no one can tell them because they don't want to yeah. re-trigger the events and start them over again. So their whole lives fell apart anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Dang. 
and Dalton's heading off to college mm-hmm. and he hates his dad. He hates his, his dad. dad's lame. And his <laughs> dad's like, go to this frat party. And, what? <laughs> and his dad was like, where did it all go wrong? And uh, he actually doesn't know where it all went wrong. <laughs> he forgot. Um, <laughs> Classic dad move right there. <laughs> Carrie, you're a fan of Patrick Wilson and Insidious. Yes, uh, what true. are your thoughts on this film? I thought, it was, I thought it was pretty good. Like, it wasn't like... I wouldn't say that it was insanely good. The first one is still the best one by a lot. I Better think. than the last two, probably, without yeah, saying? Yeah, I'd say so. But uh, I thought it was cool. It had some really good scenes, namely the, the fucking, what's the it called? The MRI scene, machine, whatever. yeah. That yeah, was, yeah. That was, that a, that was the amazing. scene, yeah. The A lot of the plot is a little clunky and kind of silly, like yeah. how... how all of a sudden in this movie, Patrick Wilson's sad about his absent father, even though he never <laughs> heard of that yeah. ever. <laughs> but... And how Dalton reawakens his ghost powers because his art teacher's like, <laughs> yeah. think about it, go deep into your mind. And and he's and like, I keep seeing this fucking red door. <laughs> That's crazy, draw it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, there's some, some silly plot threads in here that don't really... They come out of nowhere and also don't get resolved. Like that whole thing with the ghost at the frat house. They just kind of found him and then. Oh yeah, didn't do anything. right. The one with the toilet. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I yeah, still understand weird. how ghosts work in this universe. They're just hanging out. <laughs> just hanging out. But like, they never felt like they they. There's like a ghost version of like, like a place. It felt like. You know, you're in the ghost world and it's just dark and weird. I think the the realms are supposed to exist kind of on top of each other. Okay. And so, like, there you, could be I... ghosts in here right now, but they, they come through more layers and get closer to, like, Dalton and his dad. Patrick but, like, Wilson, whenever they walk they... outside, they're in this, like, just black abyss and, like, oh, we're running for a yeah. long while. There's not, like, you know, 72nd Street and it's ghosts. Right. There's not a lot, lot of ghosts. So, yeah. so you need more lore building. Is I, need, I need more very specific lore building. Well, I have good news. We're probably going to get more insidious Because of this, it's so much money. I wonder, Patrick Wilson. Um, yeah, I don't know if you had more thoughts to carry before I, I jumped in. Yeah. No, I think it, overall it was better than I expected it, to be honestly. Because when those first trailers came out, I was like, ooh, <laughs> that yeah. looks a little stinky. But I should have had more faith in my in my boy, Patrick Wilson. Yeah, that's the thing. I think that's the thing. I think people, uh, Andrew Wilson and everybody sought out to make a decent movie. Mm-hmm. Everybody had good intentions, it seems like. Um, and maybe that helps that Patrick Wilson has a like still cares about this franchise a little bit. And uh where, like, the other ones were, like, they were movies. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, so I guess I think it's serviceable. It's totally fine. It's it's a movie. Um, it's not very spooky. The MRI thing is the height of the yeah. spookiness. Um, and uh, I got kind of lost at the whole father-son stuff. I didn't really care that much. Yeah, I don't it care. was a little silly. <laughs> it's a little much. Um, but, yeah, that's that's all I got to say. It's, 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 a, it's a totally competent movie. I don't know. Ryan, what do you think? I... It, it, I I agree. It's it's totally fine. I think it's a good. I'm, I'm excited for Patrick Wilson to direct more stuff because yeah. yeah, something with a little more originality. It's just like ah, oh, the fifth city movie. I guess. <laughs> I'm also curious because we 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 watched one and two before this, and two ends with a big like, oh my god, right? Yeah. And they never resolved that. Resolved, yeah. Yeah. So I wonder if they'll bring it back, even though they called this one the the final chapter. Okay, sure. Yeah, right. It made the <laughs> yeah. most yeah. money. They thought it would be the final <laughs> chapter, and then they saw the paycheck, and they're like, oh, <laughs> oh <yeah>. shit. <laughs> I think I think Pat, someone like Pat, Patrick Wilson can become sort of like the Lin Shay character, oh, or I he's like a, the, something else is happening, someone else, and then they find Patrick Wilson. And, that would be awesome. Yeah, <laughs> that's how I see you can see his like. Help. I mean, God, what if he gets in contact with the Warrens from the oh, country right. and then it's Patrick Wilson so acting with Patrick Wilson? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that would be incredible. That would be the best day of my life. That would be my Freddy versus Jason. <laughs> Patrick Wilson versus Patrick Wilson. Make it happen. Yeah. I don't know. That's it. Is there anything else to say about Insidious the Red Door? It's better than you think it Pretty is. Pretty good. The, Stay for the, the end credits. The, the cliffhanger for the trailer for that movie is like the ocean wave starts coming. Like, Who's that? It's, like, it's me, Ocean Master. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> now this the time. Wong verse is, is finally here. Is that still slated to come out this year? Uh, yeah. No. I read a thing that um, no I'm way that one gets coming. <laughs> I, I read a th- I read a thing because Warner Brothers and we'll talk about this more la- later wants to do more of the like cross promotion thing that made a certain movie this month do very well 
And they want to apparently cross promote Aquaman two with Shark Week heavily oh. and try to Shark Week those happened, together. Though. I never. You could tell me any random week in the year. Shark I know. Shark Week, like, Shark okay. week is a meaningless thing, and I and I don't understand what the deal is. Like I feel like I was excited, like when we were in elementary school. Like, but Brandon, did you hit Shark Week? Yeah, I love sharks. Aquaman <laughs> Two is slated to come out December twentieth, twenty twenty three. Oh hell yeah! Merry Christmas. fucking Christmas. Yeah. We're gonna have a Wonka. Aquaman. Yeah, I was gonna say they're competing Wonka against Woman. each other. <laughs> Wonka Woman, baby. Well. That's it. Today it's the Red Doer. It's a film. Check it out. Uh, Joyride. Uh, this is a continuation from last month's, like, we're making normal movies again, baby. <laughs> where we get up to antics and they're a little horny and we say fuck sometimes. Um, who saw Joyride? Did I did. It? Okay. Saw it. Okay. Um, so yeah, we, as far, actually, you guys saw the movie. Ryan, what, what's this movie about? So this is a movie about, um, a Chinese american woman she was adopted from china um but grew up in america and she has big business trip to china for the first time she's never been there so she takes her friend who knows chinese who's a little wacky and not as much of a business lady as her <laughs> to be her um you know translator. translator um and they and they also bring in uh, two other friends along the way and they've been some kind of wacky adventures in China. <laughs> little little goofy goofy stuff happening. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's that's really about that's it. it. So it's not really a joyride though. I thought about that all the way. Yeah, I don't know what that means. Because <laughs> <laughs> they're not ever really in a car together. They're like a bus. Is one of their names Joy? I don't think so. Okay, I don't know. Uh, Joy's ride. No. Joy's cover. Ride. <laughs> nope. Mm, okay. Well, uh, I guess like. Did the goofs, are the goofs, so what, like, when you have one of these movies, you can try too hard, and the goofs are cringe and terrible. Uh, what's, how did the comedy land for you, Ryan Lance? Uh, it landed fine. Nothing, like, really, like, broke me, like, horribly, like, like, ha, oh, oh, so funny. It, it has <laughs> been, it has been a while, so I'm, like, a little forgetty on, on some of the stuff, but it's one of those comedy movies where I feel Thank like, you. at least for me, I wasn't laughing, like, verbally but it was just like a nice warm like oh they're all yeah. silly goofy having fun and that's fine you don't a uh, movie to be funny doesn't need to be like externalize that necessarily it can be like oh that's that's funny that's silly that's a that's a good <laughs> bit there um but i'm also probably not the target audience for this so that sure. that might have that might have been part of the thing there but overall i felt like it was a it was a pretty fun time and you know it's always good to kind of get this kind of perspective on you know female friendships um you know from mm -hmm. you know a more asian perspective on that i feel like the movie does a good job of uh that and that i, I believe know. this is directed by one of the writers of crazy rich asians yeah co -writer. yes 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 okay also this movie did not do well uh -oh. 14 million dollars i don't yeah. think it like cost that it, there's no way it cost a lot of money though that's true but still Remember 14 million dollars is not great it was Carrie well If this Ryan was like a million dollar Insidious movie, fourteen million dollars. <laughs> oh wow! Uh, Carrie, what'd you think of this? I thought it was pretty fun. I went to see it with a couple of our our our, our friends who are ladies, so we uh, had okay. a girls' night of it, which I think is the premium the optimum audience, way to yeah. watch it, and we had a lot of fun. Okay. But uh, yeah, I I wasn't gonna go see it on my own because it didn't really speak to me that much just based on the trailers, but. I enjoyed myself. It was it was pretty funny, and it had a lot to do with because she she's going to China for her business trip. She has to like seal the deal with some partner uh, yeah, who's yeah. in China. But while she's there talking to him, he the her her childhood friend is also uh, saying how they need to find her birth mother because they had always talked about that right, when she was she's a kid. Adopted. Mm -hmm. And so when they're there, uh, the businessman is like talking to her about family and she's like oh i was adopted and he was like oh you don't know your chinese mom you need to have family right. here she in wants order to close to... the deal right? yeah exactly and he's like in order for me to trust you in business gotcha. so then they wind up going on this adventure to try and find the birth mother and that ends up with some really like heartfelt stuff too which i wasn't really expecting so that was but i was like there's that usually nice. a, a for these kind of movies usually there's like an actual lesson or heart yeah. thing and so it's family. Yeah. So a lot of that stuff's really good. A lot of but... the conclusion with like the parent stuff I thought was really good and very interesting. 
um, and not like what I expected would happen from right. a silly movie <laughs> like this. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it's 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 a nice movie. Like there's nothing. I, I still don't know. plan to rent it since it's digitally. Um, it's actually I didn't yeah. do. Yeah, I guess this was a this was a Point Grey, Ev, uh, Seth Rogen, Evan Goldberg produced film also. Um, that that doesn't surprise yeah. me given some of the antics the way they get up to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. But yeah, I'm sure this movie is it, it, as soon as it goes up like on a streaming service, it'll probably pick oh, up yeah. huge. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. All right, well, that's Joyride. Uh, oh, also, we didn't mention it has Stephanie Sue. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. She's very funny. She's very funny. <laughs> okay. Biosphere. Not to be confused with the Pauly Shore movie Biodome, which is oh. every time I see that oh. thing, I think of the movie Biodome. <laughs> we are always thinking about the movie Biodome. I am. Also, not to be confused with the Stephen King novel Under the Dome. Oh, no. Or the terrible Amazon show Under the Dome. Mm, didn't Ooh. watch that. No. <laughs> Uh, Carrie, you the one who saw this, or Ryan? I think so. Okay. Yeah, Ryan. I wanted to see. I wanted to see it, but when when I realized it was showing, um, in in our neck of the woods, it was always showing at like four p.m. on weekdays, <laughs> yeah. and I was like, that's really convenient for me. I have to leave. Me. I have to leave work early to see Biodome. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were. Oh, it's Biosphere. Oh, oh no. <laughs> see, that's your problem. You're looking at the wrong. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> That explains so much about how I ended up in this situation. So as I understand, all I got from this movie is there's two buds mm-hmm. hanging out in yep, a yep, place. Yep. Yep. And that's it. Uh, yep, pretty much. The world has ended Dang. effectively. And these two are the last two people alive on the planet. And they're best buds. And you kind of find out what transpired to cause the end of the world through their discussions with each other. But basically, uh, Sterling K. Brown plays the more responsible half of the duo, and then Mark Duplass, yes. Mark uh, Duplass. plays the the kind of wackier, more leisurely half of the duo, and they're in this con- self-contained little biosphere, biosphere bunker thing, <laughs> and they have the fish that uh, uh, grow the plants, and they have all this stuff, and... It's basically, they start off and their fish start dying. And Uh-oh. they have to figure out what's going on there. And then they, the events of the film go a little wacky. <laughs> Not where I was expecting oh, the film okay. to go at all. But I thought it was fantastic. So it's just them trying to survive this situation. And the ways they grow and change and affect each other. <laughs> so is it like funny? <laughs> it was very funny, but also like also really heartfelt and also really genuine but it's like a, a a very weird thing is happening but it's treated super genuinely so it's really nice mm-hmm. but i don't want to spoil okay it's i've heard very... i've heard very good things about this movie yeah this it, is already streaming to rent uh, i'd I, recommend it it's okay. fun okay so is it like um See, it's an hour and 40. Like, how quiet? Because just two guys. So, mm-hmm. like, how quiet is them just hanging out and stuff? Or is there, is there like... Uh, there's not... There's there's some, like, tension scenes where there's some... Because they notice that there's this green light up in the sky. And mm. then there's some, some weather that happens. And they have to sort of adapt for that. But... Most of the movie is just them hanging out, talking to each other, and trying to navigate their their changing circumstances, I'll say. And okay. uh, the music is also really good. It was very uh, Swiss Army Man, Swiss Army Man mouth sounds type of acapella type music, and I'm always all in for anything Swiss Army Man esque. Hmm. Okay. But yeah, I would highly recommend. First it. movie directed by this person mm-hmm. and written. Uh, he used to be a was an executive producer on, and producer on some things, such as Horse Girl. Oh, well, I never saw that, but I heard good things. Mm-hmm. And Tony Hawk until the wheels fall off. A good documentary. I like oh, that. Yo. Okay, Biosphere. All right, maybe I'll check that out. I need to actually rewatch a trailer one. for it. Um, and Sterling K. Brown. They're both really good, but Sterling K. Brown is fantastic in that movie. I will say, standout performance of the, of the two. Okay. <laughs> And it is just, well, I don't want to spoil it if there is any other, someone else shows up, woo, and outside of the sphere. Uh, oh, no, it's Matt Damon. <laughs> I, that's what I was thinking. Oh, Christ. I was getting big uh, interstellar, uh, yeah. 
Anyways, uh, Shin Kamen Rider, directed by Hideaki Anno of Evangelion and Shin Godzilla. Fame, yes, right? yes, yes. And Kamen Rider is... Kamen Rider is... Like the Power uh, Ranger guys, kind of? Basically, yeah, kind of inspired by that whole group. It's like a 70s Japanese superhero show that's gone on since the 70s in various different versions of it. And this is a uh, modern live-action reboot that he... Um, wrote and directed um basically just uh Hideaki Anno of Evangelion fame Evangelion and Shin Godzilla fame yeah part of this whole thing that they had because they wanted to make Shin Godzilla Shin Ultraman Shin Kamen Rider as part of this new rebirth of classic Japanese heroes which includes Godzilla I guess um nice but this movie is uh insane <laughs> I don't know. I know very, very little about Common Rider. It's I've just seen like clips of you know silly little, you know Japanese Super Sentai flips and like huh, yeah, buh, like that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. And this is all of that really blowed out of proportion. It is absolutely <laughs> insane. Um, it has like it feels like you you were watching like five movies in a row because like it starts with like him. Like, he's like, oh, here are your powers. Oh, there's the first villain. Oh, big fight. You defeated the first villain. Now go off to def- defeat the other villains. Ba 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 ba. Now you have to defeat this guy. Ba ba da. Oh, there's a second common writer. You must fight your rival. Ba ba da ba. You're best friends now. Ba ba da ba. It's, it's, that absolute, sounds like Shin Godzilla. <laughs> it's absolutely insane and like almost incomprehensible, but it, it reaches a point where you're just like, yeah, this is great. This is fun. <laughs> And it just has more, like, fun and, like, intrigue and personality than, like, any of the recent superhero movies from America, is to all give, I'll say. To give folks more context, the summary is, Hongo Takeshi awakens to discover he has been transformed into a grasshopper hybrid cyborg, becoming <laughs> the Mask Rider. He must fight the mysterious evil organization, Shocker, to protect all of mankind. Uh, cool. There you go. Yeah. That sounds, cool. sounds like Blue Beetle. Yeah, it's, 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 probably, it's probably very similar to Blue Beetle. All these uh, bugs. Got Ant-Man, got Beetle-Man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but this this movie, I would I would recommend it, even if you don't know much about uh, that world, which which I don't. I've only mm-hmm. seen like clips and stuff for the most part. But it's it's wild and fun, and and that's that. It's on Prime for yeah, free. I hadn't it's heard of Prime, it until right? I saw you log in on Letterboxd and you said it was the craziest movie I've heard. And I was like, what the shit is this? <laughs> All it is, it's, it's <laughs> insane. Like, like you know that thing like in animes where like two characters like jump up in the air and then like yeah, they're yeah, punching yeah, each yeah. other so fast. Yeah but they're still, like, in the air. That happens, like, 11 times in live action. And it's so ridiculous and fun. I love it so much. It's so silly. Huh. But yeah, it is streaming on Amazon Prime, it seems. Huh. Okay. Well, there's that. I didn't even saw Shin Ultraman, and I, I'm I, Shin Ultraman. I saw, I saw Shin Ultraman 2, that finally released on physical lately. And, I, and the only thing I'll say about this is if you watch an Ultraman, do not buy the Blu-ray like me. Okay. I only bought the Blu-ray because I could have bought the Blu-ray for $12 or rented it for $10. I was like, I'll just buy the Blu-ray. But the Blu-ray has some of the worst subtitle work I've ever seen. <laughs> there is misspellings, oh, no. line breaks. Um, they don't they don't show like a lot of like the words at once. There's like weird characters thrown in there um and it's just like and like you know i'm like shin godzilla like it's a very fast-paced yes. movie it's kind of like hard to like comprehend everything that's happening and also read it at the same time imagine that but like you have no time to read anything mm. like it drove me crazy i had to turn on like the english dub because i could not comprehend what was happening yeah, in the movie annoying. and it drove me insane and that i did research and apparently the only the only issue was all the Blu-ray, which is like, great. I spent more money to watch Love the that. worst version of this. That's fantastic. Well, there you go. Maybe that's why it was so cheap. Anyways, Chin Kamen Rider. Glad Hideki Yano is still out there doing stuff. Rocky guy. And the crazy guy. Um, Talk to me. Uh, Spooky hand movie. More like talk to the hand, am hey. I right? <laughs> uh, uh, talk to me. 
Uh, horror movie from 84. Sort of little indie uh, Australian movie picked up by them. We got a spooky hand. You touch the hand and it's sort of like, um, what's a game like? It was like Mary? a drinking game. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but like what's like a... There's like a few of these like, ooh, something spooky's gonna happen. But like a Bloody Mary sort of deal where like you're, you're invoking a spirit mm-hmm. or something. Uh, Charlie, Charlie, like Charlie Challenge. Charlie, Charlie. You're like a Ouija board. Yeah, yeah like yeah. a Ouija board sort of deal. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we have this hand here. It's got a bunch of scribbles all over it. And when you say talk to me, it transports you. It's like sort of talking to like the other side. But like somebody. Yeah, like a ghost, a random ass ghost will show up in front of you. Um, and if you say... You can come in, they'll possess you. Then they'll you possess you, yeah. For a little bit. Yeah. But don't let them possess you for too, too long. long. Guess what happens in the movie? <laughs> they don't want to go. They don't want to stay. stay. <laughs> um, so, yeah, uh, a lot of hype on this one. We saw it a little bit early. It just kind of released recently when you're watch- listening to this, uh, uh, listener. Um, it's a very good movie. It's, it's a very good, spooky movie. movie. Where do we even start with it? I don't know, Carrie. What, 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 do, yeah, what do you think about this? Um,. You've seen this twice. I did now. see it twice, <laughs> and uh, it holds up. We're seeing a trailer for the movie Lord of War, by the way, listeners. Oh, Great hell movie. Yeah. Anyways, I've continue. never seen this one. It's very good. <laughs> uh, but yeah, and I remember seeing the trailers for this first start popping up, and it's exactly my shit. Right. I love ghosts. I love a little ritual that you have to do. I love a little object. <laughs> but mm-hmm. uh, so I was very excited for this movie, and I didn't know anything about the directors but they are youtubers mm-hmm. and uh they have a channel called raka raka i think or <laughs> oh that's what they were calling that. that okay yeah and uh greg knew a couple of their videos <laughs> but uh but they also made a really great video uh covering their uh their journey on taking the movie to sundance which i would highly recommend if you want to look into them a little more but this movie is just so fucking great and i loved how tense it was and all the acting was really great and it's just it's one of those horror movies that is just so simple but so fucking effective and Mm -hmm. it does not it does not give you any reprise you're just like once you're in it you're like oh fucking hell and it just it does not let go. It does not let go of your hand. Mm-hmm. <laughs> one one thing I appreciate about this movie is like it's it's very brutal, but it's very brutal to like kids. <laughs> sure. Which like I feel like you don't really see as much. Like movies try to be like, oh, we don't want to like kill any kids or like hurt any kids, but like this movie's like, oh, oh no no yeah, no, yeah, one, they're yeah, gonna. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not afraid to go there. It's not afraid. It's, to, brutal, it's yeah. not afraid to go there. Yeah, but like in in like a good way, obviously, and it's kind of like keeps that dread, but doesn't like. I don't know. Like as, as I I'm, think it leans into it, it gets a lot of it gets a lot out of actually focusing on the brutality and how awful it is. This is happening yeah. to a person, so it's like it's not like played out for like shock. I mean, it is, but not like a death, like a kill on a Friday the Thirteenth movie. Right. It's like look at this poor kid just. Fucking yeah, it's like, yeah. oh wow, we just went through that. Yeah. Um, yeah. But what I also love is just like a lot of it, like when I was watching this movie, like I just didn't trust anything. Right, <laughs> right, 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 right. Like, like there's stuff with like certain ghosts that like you know you think like you're supposed to trust, and I'm just like I don't trust anyone. Right. I don't trust anything that's happening, and. I miss feeling that you <laughs> you don't you don't like sometimes with a lot of these movies you know you're like oh like I understand the rules of this mm-hmm. and these people don't but like no I understand the rules of this and these people don't and that's why I'm more terrified than them <laughs> because I feel like they're not understanding the situation right. they're you're in. not sure how it's going to end yes um yeah I think that was the thing I was like I don't know how this movie's going to end particularly yeah um. For me, I think uh, I really like it as well. Um, I think my f- one of my low key favorite things about this movie is the sound mixing is incredible mm. in this movie. Watching it at the Alamo, there is a there is a there's a point where one of the ghosts uh, unsuspectedly comes into a room with one of the characters, and I thought it was so, like the mixing was so good and so well positioned that I thought it was somebody in the right, theater. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> like, is somebody talking to yeah. them? But it's no, yeah. Uh, is so someone that, talking to me? Me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you need anything else? <laughs> uh, which is a small antidote that Alma Draft House, oh our God. waiter. What, what scene was happening? It was the get... scene. Oh, the <laughs> scene? Okay. okay yeah, like, the one we're literally... talking about the brutality. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. The, the most brutal scene, the waiter was like, can, guys, <laughs> I'm sorry, your credit card was declined. <laughs> Later, later, later. <laughs> when when we went the second time, they came about seven minutes before that. <laughs> so okay. they, they altered their schedule a little bit. We got it the was comments. So fucking funny. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Um Yeah, I think uh my only thing I, I the only thing I didn't like about this movie was um again the sort of horror A24 family tragedy sort of linkage with the horror uh which is maybe they're because slowly becoming a trope of theirs um even though they don't they didn't pay for this movie or, or wrote it they just picked it up after they made yeah. it as they do um but yeah this is a, this is a very good horror movie uh the scares are really well done um i like the characters i feel really bad for the main protagonist because it seems like this is a it's not fun for them uh, and that was the thing where, again, where I was like, I don't know how this is gonna end, and I don't want to spoil it, but um, yeah, you don't. There's no, you don't see a way out for anyone. Yeah, yeah. It's like yeah. I don't know how you beat this thing. Well, usually when you're watching a horror movie like this, it's like, oh, we can beat this thing by doing this. There's, there's thing. a montage yeah. of where they, they get the duct tape out and they like make the contraption. Like, We're gonna defeat the evil mirror <laughs> or whatever, <laughs> and then you know, it's like, mm-hmm. oh, but yeah. Talk to me. It's very good. I think. Um, I hope a lot of people... I don't think so. I think most people walked out of this uh, still liking it, but the marketing for it has been very intense. 84 has been really been like, this was going to make you shit and piss and come and fear. <laughs> um, so I hope people don't have their expectations way too high, but it is extremely good. Um, delivers on the concept. Uh, talk to me. Pretty good, folks. Um, I loved it. One of my favorites of the year, baby. Yeah, it's very good. Um... But the one thing I, I mean, again, I don't live in Australia, and I get this is a. I'm sure this is an actual. Never will. <laughs> it's just, re- it was just really like the one thing I knew with this movie starting is like Australian and spoilers for the movie. They're driving in the middle of the night, and there's a dead kangaroo in the mm-hmm. middle, and like, I'm sure there's a thing that happens in Australia oh, sure. where there's kangaroos. Yeah. But it's just like, all right, come on. It's I just mean, scary. It's probably, it's probably the same as like seeing a fucking dead. A hundred percent. It's just like when you know the one thing in Australia is a kangaroo, and then oh no, and then there's a dingo taking my baby, and like, anyways. Talk to me. Check it out. Pretty good. I didn't. I didn't know it was Australia. So when it's like, really? oh, there's a dead joy in the what? road. <laughs> I'm like, oh, whoa, we're really going all out with the Australia. Huh? The weirdest thing about this, uh, in another of the movie, is the directors are making another Street Fighter movie. I saw that. Yeah. I saw them. T- I I remember they talk about that, and I was like, huh. Okay. Okay. Third time's the charm, I guess. <laughs> Have fun with that, guys. Uh, so yeah. Um, mission impossible. Oh, sorry. Mission comma impossible dash dead reckoning part one. Yeah. When I was typing that title, <laughs> I was like, I went to do my normal punctuation. I was like, oh, for fuck's sake! Like, well, <laughs> the like, colon is between mission and impossible, and I was like, fucking. Yeah, there's not a there should be a comma after reckoning. <laughs> well, then I was just like. Well, because I would have, I expect the Mission col- Impossible the com- to be yeah, yeah, yeah. before the part one or something. And it's just like, no. this is a nightmare. Yep, 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 <laughs> Too yep. many. <laughs> um, this is the seventh Mission Impossible movie. Um, some background, I guess. Uh, Kara, you saw Fallout. Mm-hmm. Ryan hasn't seen any of these. I've, I saw Fallout. You I saw a, Fallout? I saw free ticket to see Fallout, um, and I had to go, like, a day it was very busy, and I hated it. <laughs> Because uh, I was surrounded by a bunch of dudes who were like, yeah! And I was like, oh. <laughs> Sorry, I was there too. Yeah. Oh, no. Mission Impossible Fall, one of the best action movies in the past think, decade. I don't, it's incredible. Really it's it incredible. Really <laughs> uh, but context for that, uh, I guess. I, am I the one who saw this? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So I wanted to see, I saw Top Gun last year and I really liked it. And I was like, I want to watch these Mission Impossible movies. Uh, I only seen one and two going into this one. Uh, one being a classic spy movie, very good. Two being... I've heard not good. <laughs> oh, man. It sure seems like nobody knew what John Woo was saying as they said, reports was like, I didn't know what he was saying, man. Oh, no. uh, All uh, I know about that movie is like stills of like um, Tom Cruise with like that really long hair, like 
climbing it. Yes, hole. yes, he climbed the thing. Yeah. Has the Hans Zimmer. Is that the, the worst? only thing that happens in that movie? That's the beginning of the movie. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> and that's the best part of the movie, also. Oh, no. <laughs> With the Hans Zimmer cover of the Mission Impossible theme. He makes the he, the worst Mission Impossible theme somehow is Hans Zimmer's version. Anyways, uh, yeah. Uh, so where, where do I say? Okay, so this is a good, very good action movie. Baseline is what I'll say. Uh, it looks very expensive. The stunts are really cool. Nothing. It's not as good as Fallout. But I'm, I'm going at it as like, if you've never seen any of these, this is a solid baseline action movie it's very good and that's why i walked out of it and then i saw all the other ones and now i really am invested and now i want to watch it again because i'm sure i'd love it a lot more um but it's not showing anywhere anymore because this movie got kind of fucked by the way it got put mm -hmm. um but yeah i don't know what to tell you like so in this movie okay in this movie ethan they're chase e right uh ethan hunt, hunt. Oh, Close. Okay, <laughs> okay cool. so in this movie, in this one, there is an AI called the Entity that is all-knowing and all-seeing and whatever the hell, and whoever controls the AI controls everything. Mission Impossible setups for these movies, they are based on a 60s show, and their stories are still <laughs> the exact same. It's either nukes, it's either fucking a virus, it's, yeah, it's all that. So, and there is this bad guy who the entity controls. Uh, he literally lays in a coffin, and the ent like, he's got like a giant LED screen of the entity, which is just a circle with like dots moving around, and he just gets <laughs> blasted with the. And he works for the entity. Uh, and Tom Cruise has to grab. It sounds like an Akira knockoff. There are two. There is a key, and the key has two keys. When you put them together, it unlocks a submarine called the Dead Reckoning. And in, in the Dead Reckoning is the how you control the AI. Uh, Part one. Yeah. So Tom Cruise has been assigned to find the in his crew. Uh, it's been assigned to find both keys, both parts of these keys, uh, so they can control the entity. Um, Tom Cruise, like, talks to the his government, you know, always can trust his United States government, and he's like, hey guys, this thing's crazy, we should do something. And then they're all like, Tom, we want you to find the key, and then we're gonna use it. <laughs> and then he's all like, fuck that. <laughs> uh, and so the, the goal is to get the key before anyone, any government gets it. Uh, and that's the movie. Um, part one. <laughs> yeah, my, my, one question, my one question is like, how much of a part one is this movie? It doesn't finish. It, it doesn't they, finish. They only the movie ends with them getting on one part of the key. Oh, shit. oh no! I think they get. I he think gets part one of the key. <laughs> Do they get both? No, they, they. Okay, the movie ends with them having both key with the whole key. Oh my god! So and then Tom Cruise like I'm gonna. But, but he doesn't want to give it to the government. So it's like, what is he gonna do with the key? He's gonna transcendence himself. With exactly. Key. Honestly, yes, that's exactly. They're trying to find the, the machine from Transcendence. Um, so yeah, this is a this is a solid action movie. The stunts are big. I think the the biggest problem with this movie is that they marketed the the crazy Tom Cruise stunt way too much, and it's not that cool. Which is like he jumped off a fucking mountain on a motorcycle, and then he just like. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right, right. Like, like that's cool, but like he was like on a plane. He was on a fucking plane, and he yes. also <laughs> fell from a different plane. Yes, and this is just a cool motorcycle. And then there was a hell of a helicopter scene. Yeah, yeah. so that's the biggest problem with this movie is that the stunt is not that cool, and so I think expectations for this movie were off whack. And then it's very much like the first movie, which is uh, a little more. It's a lot more spy than the other one. Um, so all that to say, it's, it's, it's a solid, good action movie. I think, uh, I don't know. It's it's not the best Mission Impossible movie. It's a solid movie. That's what I'll say. I will watch Mission Impossible. I'm sure I'd like it more now that I have context. I've seen the first trailer last year, folks. I said, I haven't seen any of the Mission Impossible movies, but this trailer for Dead Reckoning Part 1, it feels like it's somebody, like, when they have a big deal thing, and you're like, I don't know, you're being very extra right now, bro. <laughs> Where it's like, it's like, it felt like somebody nerding out about a thing you have no idea like, oh my god this is part one oh they're back and i was like i have no idea and now i've seen that trailer with the context i'm like Mom! you gotta choose a side uh anyways um so yeah i'm very excited for this to come out in 4k i hope that i'll watch it and i like it more but it's a solid action movie it's mission impossible it's fun times tom cruise he's all right oppenheimer <laughs>
Uh, Steve, talking crazy. about crazy stunts, they can't believe they put an actual <laughs> nuclear bomb. I can't believe Florence Pugh actually did that in that conference room. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Christopher Nolan's Oppenheimer, uh, starring Killian Murphy, Emily Blunt, Florence Pugh, Robert Downey Jr., which I took me <laughs> halfway through this movie, like, that's Robert Downey Jr. <laughs> He's like, it's like, it's half the movie. I don't recognize him when there's no color in Yeah, face. exactly. I was like, oh, hey. <laughs> um, and Matt Damon. Uh, and Josh Peck. Um... A yeah. lot of people. I didn't put the full cast. There's a lot of people. Dane DeHaan. Dane DeHaan. That, what a highlight. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, uh. We're so fucking back. Badass. One of the Safdie brothers? Yeah. One of the Safdies, ben yeah. Safdie, it's being believe. incredibly moist throughout this movie. <laughs> yeah. Very moist. As he always <laughs> is. Very Russian. Yeah. <laughs> Cartoon character. Um. So yeah, where do we start with this movie? Um. Uh, it is a movie about. It is, it's a biopic about, um. Oppie Oppenheimer. Oh, Oppie. Um, Robert? That's his first name, right? Robert Oppen. I think so. Yeah. Robert Oppenheimer. Robin, Robin. <laughs> and just like the story of him as, you know, a big science guy, and then he hears word of this big project, and he's like, I want to be a part of this project. And they're like, but you're a communist. And he's like, whoa now. Yes, but I really... I just I'm, like to listen to both sides, you know? I just got some questions. Yeah, and, and, he, and, I, I, and he just like... You know, he, he wants to be part of this because, you know, it's like, oh. Science. Science. I love science. I want to be part of this thing. Also, once we make this weapon, there is not a chance war will ever exist after this. They're going to be like, wow, that's fucked up. We should all stop fighting. That's yeah. what he fucking thought was going to happen. <laughs> what an idiot. <laughs> what, like, I don't like being a scientist. Like, you know, you... You know, he has a science brain, but, like, what an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, my God. Wait, wait, you can't do that. It's like, I just did. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it's, it's you know, him, him building the thing and then doing the Trinity Project and then some fallout from what happens after that. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's a very good movie. Like, that's how I feel. It's a good movie. It's how I felt about, like, Dunkirk. Like, that's a very well-made movie. I feel like it says yeah. everything it's trying to say about those events. Um, it's very pretty. It's filmed very well. But there's no spark in me when I watch this movie. No. That's how I feel. Like, yeah, I like I like that aspect ratio in the IMAX we saw. It. That was pretty cool. I could not care less about this <laughs> yeah. movie. Yeah. Like, that is a film for me. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It's well-made. And so I was really shocked that I was like, oh, you guys are like fucking crazy about this movie. People are crazy about yeah. it. It's, and like, I guess good for people. Mondo for Oppie. Um, yeah, I don't know what else to say. Carrie, you said you were like, that's a movie. Yeah, I, it, it just, I could not get invested at all. And I don't know what it was. I watched the Red Letter Media review and they talked about how the music was just insanely overpresent. And maybe that was part of my issue because it would be like, well, of course we have the scene where he's suiting up and it was. <laughs> oh my goodness, a oh, marble. That's, that's, that's pretty good. Funny. That's, that's, like, really that's really funny. A, like his Aubrey hat as if he's Indiana he's, Jones. He's in the little village and he's wearing his little military outfit. And I don't remember who it is comes in and it's like, it, it maybe it's. This is like a Mar his other American it's, Jewish it's, scientist it's, friend. It's, uh, Bernard New York. the Elf. <laughs> yeah, comes yeah, yeah, yeah. In and he's like, this isn't you. You're a scientist. Yeah. Dressed like a scientist. And then it cuts to a literal suit up montage. <laughs> he's picking up every piece of his Oppenheimer <laughs> outfit. Lady, where cold. is my super fancy hat? <laughs> and the score is swelling and yeah. it's so fucking stupid. Yeah. <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't. I don't I don't know about I don't know about things, I don't know about history, I don't know about stuff. I <laughs> could not get invested in this. None movie of us are all. are World War II no, aficionados. Absolutely not. But uh, and my, that's about it. My <laughs> biggest <laughs> problem with this movie, Carrie, I don't know if you had more to say. Other not than like... really. Just it, it it kept me at arm's length and I couldn't ever really get invested. Like there's really good scenes, like specifically the scene where he's giving the speech and he sees the like all the room explode and the ladies right. like screaming. That scene was really fantastic, and, but that's the only time that it like started to click. And when you me. find out the the big rumbling you hear throughout the movie is right. not the bomb, it's the people doing the steps yes. waiting yeah, for yeah, him. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. That's cool. But yeah. 
So my problem with the movie, and it's tied into that, that I don't know much about, like you said, World War, but I do know that nuclear weapons, nuclear bombs, and the effect it does in treating human beings like butter is fucking horrifying. Oh, yeah. And the horror of it is never... I never feel the horror of, like, the thing he actually did. Right. Like, they keep talking about it, but they don't show it apart from that scene uh, where they're having the meeting, like, we did it! Yeah, and that, we did it! Yeah, and that's just him, like, imagining it. Imagining it. You don't, it, not you don't really seeing see... It. You don't really see it. You don't feel the actual weight of, like, at any point we can kill each other now. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, I mean, I I don't think it needed, like, a ho- overly graphic scene of anything like sure. that. Like, that would feel kind of exploitative. But, like, I still agree. It, it just felt like it presented what happened, and then for the rest of the movie, we're sitting with how he feels bad. And it's That's like, my problem. You, don't you feel bad that he feels bad? And I'm like, no. No, I, I feel bad. No, I do not. I feel bad. He really should have understood what he was getting into. <laughs> That's <a> scientist. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, also, oh, I forgot, oh my god, and I lost the point I was going to say. Um, yep, I lost the point. Never mind. Um, but yeah, it certainly looks good. Um, I'm trying to think of like a perform. Like, Kenny Murphy does, he does, a, he does the yeah, job. He did the job. Yeah. It, he does good. Yeah, he does I good. Think, I think Robert Downey Jr. will definitely get nominated for a supporting role thing. But the thing is, like, I didn't care just, about it at all. I think yeah. that was the main thing is, for me with his character is like, it had all this stuff with him and his stuff was always in a different color. And I was like, why is this? Like, I know it's, I understand it's from his perspective, but like, why should I know who this senator that, yep, person yep. is? I'm sorry, I wasn't born in the 40s or it had a major in U.S. history, I guess. I'm sorry. <laughs> and it's like the what the and like, and like, as it went, as it went on, I'm like, oh, I get it. And like, and like the rel, and the relevations with all that, like, it was interesting, but like, I wasn't invested in that part of the story early on, so it was hard to, like, get me on the tail end. And, like, the you stakes, know? you realize, like, you just kind of get secretary? Like, you just kind of get a cushier job? That's yeah. what yeah. it is? Yeah, like, what? what? The okay. I don't know what the and now Oppenheimer can't... About. He just loses his security clearance, which, like, I get is important to him, but, like, I don't now, know. Now, like, he's getting... Like, there's people who are actually put in jail for yeah, their relationship right. with the communist government. Mm-hmm. And, like, that didn't happen... He just like was it, yeah I was like okay I guess uh, and I guess we're spoiling the movie but like the most interesting I think the my favorite part and it took too long I like the way it ends the way it ends is great I love the way it ends I thought that was so really this is when cool you find out what Albert Einstein told him oh right I, yes, I love yes. that like yeah, that, that was good. great yeah. uh, but uh, it was it was a good reveal of you know like you know what happened and also kind of gets you more in the head of Robert Downey Jr.'s character where he's like. Oh, it has to be about me. Yeah, Everything's it's about, about me. me. <laughs> <laughs> and it was instead he was like, "I'm off to get my guy and get to, to see my gynecologist." <laughs> like, oh no! But yeah, this is a, out of the. I haven't seen all of Nolan's movies. I've only seen a few. I just barely saw Memento two weeks ago. This is definitely my least favorite out of his. Uh, so yeah, what I've I seen. I agree. Uh, I like Tenet's least stupid and funny. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> also, having seen, I'm about to watch Heat because I bought Heat on 4K. But now that I've seen the Mission Impossible movies, like, man, Nolan was trying to make a Mission Impossible movie so bad. He loves action movies and he just doesn't have it in him, man. I don't know. I will not have any Tenet disrespect <laughs> on this podcast, all right? Anyways, um, good for him. This movie made a shit ton of money. A ridiculous amount of money. I think it's more money than it ever would have, probably. Yes, because of the weird (laughs) cross-promotion with Barbit's going on. Which, by the way, I love, I love what this, I love the Barbenheimer stuff. It's so funny. Mm -hmm. It's, I I love people dressing up to see movies. It's just fun. You'll love to see it. Mm -hmm. But I feel so bad (laughs) for, like, the, like, the fun college girls just, like, dressing up and all pick to see Barbie. Like, oh, we'll also see Barbie uh, Oppenheimer, too. That's so funny. Then to be like, Oh, what the fuck? <laughs> you know, like, I knew this would be a bummer, but, like, wow. This is, there's, like, this, this, Yikes. You know, dark. You know, that's crazy. <laughs> I just have all peak for this. Mm-hmm. Florence Pierce in this movie also. I didn't know that until I watched it. What I find She's so naked fu- in this movie. What that's I find weird. so funny about this movie um, is, like, it's rated R for, like, you know, language and sexual stuff. If you take out Florence Pugh's character, like, her whole arc... 
I think it might be PG thirteen. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. I mean, again, like, they say the, they say fuck a lot, but I feel like people you could get away with that more nowadays for a PG thirteen movie. That's the thing. I want to read American Prometheus. Was like, was all this weird sex stuff this weird? Or did Christopher Nolan really spice this up? Did like, he see her and was like? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, so spoiler, again, we've already kind of spoiled some of this movie, but the weirdest part, and I want to read American Prometheus just to see if it's true, where the first time they, like, fuck, <laughs> um, they, like, stop mid-fuck, and Florence P. looks at his book, and there's a book of Sanskrit, and that's where they get, now I become death, destroyer of the world, or else, and she makes him read that mid-stroke, <laughs> and it is the weirdest fucking, like, what are we doing here? <laughs> Um, it's so like if you're gonna be if you're gonna be exploitative like that, you might as well show Japan getting obliterated. Is what I'm saying. Because like, my God, it's so weird. And also, one thing I love about this movie, and I've seen stills of this online, is like <laughs> there's a scene where she's just naked in a chair and oh, they're just talking. And they're both and naked. And they're just mm. butt naked. And like in some territories, they they put a yeah. they put a dress a CGI dress, a CGI on, dress on, on. I've seen stills of it and like. It looks worse because it's, it's like a really still, <laughs> but like it looks really bad and really weird. It's really funny. <laughs> and then also, I saw another one because like there's that weird scene of like um, Emily Blunt like imagining like them together, yeah, yeah, yeah. and like you, she's like looking at him, and like you see them fuck in like a weird area, and like they like cut just like cut in really tight on her faces in that oh, scene okay. and i'm like this is so funny i think that would have been less that would have been not funny and that would have been actually probably better i might think you know they probably. just did like yeah just imagining them but fucking that actually not actually seeing fucking... them have sex on a chair yeah, yeah. yeah. oh it's so funny anyways oppenheimer it's a film yeah it's a movie Sorry, folks. Let's get back to real cinema. Yeah. Barbie, directed by Greta Gerwig, written by Noam Baumbach and her as well, starring Margot Robbie, Ryan Gosling, and American Ferreira. Um, yeah, the big, big, big time movie. You probably uh, saw this. You probably saw this. Uh, based on the Mattel product. It just made a billion dollars. It just made a billion dollars. Yeah. We did it, team. Mm-hmm. We did it, gays. <laughs> Where do we start? I guess this was a movie. This is a movie that we were always, uh, from the marketing and the fact that it's Gerda Gerwig and Noah Baumbach, you knew they were going to do. They weren't going to. It had to be something. It had to be it something just be a toy weird. There was right. no way it could just be a toy commercial. Like, why the fuck are these people doing it? And, uh, yeah. And it turns out that, uh, yeah, it's a little weird. Uh, uh, where do we start with this? I don't even know. I mean, this is a movie made by funny people. Who like movies, which is what I said in my letterbox review. Like it yes. is a peep as a movie made by really smart and funny people who also really like movies. Um because the sets are extravagant, the colors are bright, the the jokes are funny, the timing is is good. I don't know, the acting is well made. Uh ah, this movie lands everything. The, the, the writers clearly know a lot about there, there's so much like parallels to like other there's obviously the two thousand and one stuff, there's all the creation of God mythos oh, in right, there too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, all the Godfather stuff is great, and just yeah, they just I don't know. This movie's great. Yeah, it's very good. good. Carrie, I don't know. It's just good. I don't know. It's a good movie. Very. Everyone's performances are awesome. It's. I knew it was gonna be funny, but it was like a lot funnier than really I thought nice. it would be. Ryan Gosling looks like he's having so much oh fucking my God, fun. Oh yeah. He looks like he's having a fucking I blast. Saw, I saw this tweet that made me laugh because of him doing all of his Ken jokes and all of his interviews and stuff. Someone tweeted like, I feel like we're losing Ryan Gosling the same way we lost that Elvis kid. But this time it's a little more fun. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Uh, but yeah, I just, uh, the, all of the, I just can't get over how pretty it looks and how, like, you don't mm. see movies like this mm, often. Yeah. And, like, again, like, the big, extravagant, huge-ass Wizard of Oz. I mean, it's, it's very Wizard of Oz. Yeah. Um, Singing in the Rain, soundstage, like, sort of big-ass set, which I love so much. Um, those are my favorite parts, all the stuff in Barbie World. Um, I thought the... I don't know how I feel about the. I didn't mind it, but there's a story about like the adult American for, American Ferraro's character of uh, being an adult and growing up, and things are like not perfect, uh, and how it reflects back on Barbie. Uh, I think all that stuff was fine. I was more in there for the jokes and Margot Robbie's like 
I don't know. I, what I'm saying is like, I don't know if where it ends in the lesson we're supposed to learn. I don't know if it fits fully. I was just like, sure, I don't give a shit. Whatever, that's fine. <laughs> this is fun. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I think one thing I really appreciate about this movie that, and like my fear going into this is, you know, all the trailers and all the materials were like, Barbie world, big, fun, crazy. And I was worried that this would be like the first act of the movie and the rest of it would just be normal real right. world stuff. Oh, and like, sure. gotcha. oh, we're in the Mattel headquarters and it's just like a regular set. But I was very thankful. For, like, I agree. Yeah, they were yeah. in the real world for just long enough. Yeah, and then yeah. they went right. back and things were even crazier in Barbie <laughs> world. Right. And I was like, yes, thank you. You fully, you fully went all in on this. Because I feel like there's a lot of... Um, there's an easy trap for them to be like, there's, oh, there's it's Barbie a... in the real world. Whoa. Yeah. And like, and like, yeah, that's there's just funny. enough of it. There's just enough of it. And then they like, oh, this place sucks. Let's go back. <laughs> um, and, and I just really appreciate that. I feel like it's, I feel like that's a trap with a lot of, you know, movies that like seem like, oh, this is so big and crazy. And it's like, oh, it really wasn't that. <laughs> it just kind of seemed that way from, you know, they were playing their strong hand first, but man so pretty and just it just just commits to everything that's trying to do mm -hmm. which is so much fun yeah i don't know what to say they knocked it out of the park mark robert does a great job at uh being like um it's very much a character i mean it's definitely a character like margot robbie being like you're margot robbie and she realized like yeah i'm fucking beautiful i'm like the blonde <laughs> actress like look at me i'm barbie literally like yeah uh and it seems like she's also having a lot of fun being like uh Working on a story about a character who's supposed to be perfect and uh, what that is, like you see the character change, like just like no makeup by the end of it and all that stuff. I thought that it's all really well done. And it seems mm -hmm. like everyone's having a fucking blast. Uh, yeah, I don't know what to say about it. It's good. Highly recommend. Yeah. I, I also, like, one thing I also appreciate with this is it never tries to explain, like, Barbie land. Yeah. With I a like lot that. of these kind it of just movies. Is what it is. Like, yeah. It's a parallel world, but then it's like, <laughs> It doesn't matter. It's, it's just going to the Barbie movie. And it's here. All these, just all these Ken houses are selling like hotcakes for no reason. <laughs> Mojo, Mojo Casa house. Yeah, we, we, it doesn't matter. <laughs> and like, I love that. I love how you're just like, guys, whatever. Because I, I feel like when you try to explain stuff, it like loses, you really like lose traction of it. And that's another thing and that I People are going to be smart asses anyways. Yeah, yeah. And that's another thing that I appreciate about Talk to the Hand is, you know, if you ex if they go into the lore of the, oh, the like, hand, oh, yeah. it was actually cut off of ancient wizard <laughs> or whatever. Well, and you it's know like, what? Actually, that's pretty dope. <laughs> Talk to me, too. Talk <laughs> to me. <laughs> the, the handless wizard comes yes. in. He's like, have you seen my head? <laughs> but... <laughs> But, and that's not, I'm getting back to talk to me, but like, that's a thing with like a lot of the scary movies where it's about a thing. Like, when you try to go back yeah, and here's the, the lore, lore of the yeah. thing, that you're like, okay, I get it. You filmed the wizard, and, and now Bagul is, is it, you've been to Thane or whatever. And it's like, now I don't care now that I know what's going on with yeah. this. But like, when you leave like that mystery, it's like, oh, quick, okay, cool. And then this is like fun, magical girl stuff and it's like okay that can just be whatever because it doesn't matter yeah mm -hmm. it, it doesn't it doesn't matter why what happens in barbie world affects the real world it, it just does and that's that's it mm -hmm. and it's great it's fun mm -hmm. michael sarah good stuff oh michael sarah is very so good fucking funny mm -hmm. good stuff so yeah barbie it's exactly what i think everybody wanted and yes everybody walked out a happy customer yeah. with this good time very very <laughs> not i i love the i I, I love all the people who are like, whoa, what a man-hating movie. Oh, like, all of those things. It's like, <laughs> I, it's like, I think this Yeah, what a, like... <laughs> my favorite... And I don't want to get political, but my favorite thing is, like, as soon as... As soon as the movie came out, fucking Ben Babibo had, like... Ben Shapiro destroys Barbie for 43 <laughs> yeah. minutes. And it's like, oh, wow, I bet you did, buddy. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, just fucking, grow up, fucking grow up here. If you're like, oh, because like the whole fucking point of this movie is just a reversal of a fucking, oh, yeah. I'm not going to mansplain Barbie, obviously, but like, how fucking zero media literacy do you have to be like, oh, oh that movie hates, hates men, obviously. At the end of the day, the whole movie is about 
everyone, ev- yes, everyone, <laughs> Ben, <laughs> finding value within themselves. <laughs> no, I think this movie no, hates, no, no, hates no, no. men. It's about how women are cool and men are stinky. It yeah. told me that, and it hurt my feelings, and also I love horses. <laughs> <laughs> well, Shut up. <laughs> Well, with that, that's the last movie of July. That's the last time we'll ever get political in this podcast. Oh, okay. I was just, my, my joke there was like, that's the last movie of July. Us skipping Sound of Freedom is a more part of the cabal that is trying to oh, silence that's right, that's this right. movie. Um, anyway. My favorite thing about the sound, I don't know anything about Sound of Freedom, <laughs> but I've seen shirts of, of the shirts of that was like, Oh, I don't support child enslavement. It's like, I think if anything, you worry to shirt the thing. The shirt, yeah. The shirt, yeah. The shirt I'm wearing. The shirt just be assumed. <laughs> I assume. When I look at someone, the first thing I think is like, oh, I bet this person isn't against child slavery. Yeah, exactly. But you, when you wear the shirt that says, like, I really hate child slavery. This is called something that you quit. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. I wasn't thinking about child slavery when this conversation started, but now I'm really thinking about child slavery. And you're feelings towards <laughs> yes <laughs> i'm just really worried uh, anyway yeah, see barbie yeah, yeah. barbie <laughs> i want to buy this on steelbook so bad oh, i want to yeah. bring that excited steelbook for the 4k book yes, yes. yes. very excited uh tmnt mutant mayhem is the first movie of august stuff is definitely slowing down here folks oh boy oh boy yeah when i was putting august together i was Woo! like Oof. Woo! i think everyone knew that barbie and Oppenheimer were gonna <laughs> those were the last be. movies yeah <laughs> yeah uh, yep. The Meg 2, The Trench. Directed by Ben Wheatley for some reason. Who also directed a High Rise and uh, hmm. a movie called A Field of England. He directed a Free Fire. Do you remember that movie? Huh. Oh, I still need to see uh, that. How did this happen? I have no idea. But it's He did In the fun. Earth? That movie's awesome, yes. Do either of you see the first The Meg? Nope. No. Okay. But I've this heard one, this is not good. But it looks awesome. Awesome. That was, I haven't seen a trailer, <laughs> the trailer for it. I was loving the trailer. The trailer, and then also when Ben Wheatley's name pops up in the trailer, I'm like, "What the fuck?" And Greg's like, "I don't know what that is." <laughs> like, I just that is really just, weird. Like, Why would you put it? It's only been people like, "Wait, what?" Yeah. what? <laughs> At least thirty people saw that. Exactly. Trailer. We're like, "Ooh." It's just like I I remember this like quote from like Jason Statham. Who's like, I do my own stunts. I'm not one of those CGI guys. I do, I'm a real old school action hero. And he's fighting a fucking shark, man. I don't know. Tom it's Cruise, just, you are not. It's just, it's just weird. That I don't trust that guy. I feel he, he's got some bad vibes. Mm-hmm. He would wear a I don't support <laughs> he child would. slavery t-shirt. Allegedly. Jason, <laughs> Jason um, oh no. Uh, oh yeah, did you? I don't want to talk about Sound of Freedom anymore. <laughs> Uh, the Last Voyage of the Demeter? Hell I am so yeah, excited baby. for this movie. Oh, I'm you excited. give me a Dracula, you give me a boat. I'm so excited because this is the first, like, shitty-looking horror movie that Ryan is on board for. And I'm like, 100%. yes, my team. <laughs> because, like, listen, it's just, it's just that one part of Nosferatu, but it's the whole movie. Yeah. That's amazing. That's so funny. That's so funny that you had a, it was a boardroom of white executives that are like, Guys, this this Dracula book is a real page turner. Extrapolate as many ideas <laughs> as they can. But uh, oh my god, that's so be, funny. It's gonna be awesome. <laughs> uh, I'm so excited because oh. yeah, well, it's on the boat, Ryan. Right? It's just him on a boat, <laughs> and like you're stuck on a boat with a Dracula. What, what do you do? do? I don't know. <laughs> you can't get off the boat. It's 18 clickety whatever. I'm, I'm in. I'm hooked. <laughs> I'm. I'm one boat ticket, please, for me. That's what I'm saying. So, oh, man. Take the ride, folks. Take the ride. Blue Beetle. <laughs> I'll watch it. I'll, I'll also watch it. It looks totally fine. Yeah, it looks like I, I just feel like no one's going to watch this. No. Nope. It's got Susan Sarandon in it. As a bad I guy, which is really interesting, yeah. I do love her. I, I, we, uh, uh, when she we went to see Barbie beetle. with our, our friend Zoe, I leaned over to her and I was like, they always put a fabulous bitch in these stupid movies that makes me want to watch them. <laughs> they did the same thing to me with Ant-Man. They put Michelle Pfeiffer in it. I'm like, well, I'm going to go see it. And guess what? Ant-Man sucks. <laughs> uh, bottoms. Yes. Um. <laughs> Gay Girl Fight Club. Mm-hmm. It's just fun. Same director as Shiva Baby. Very fun movie. One of my comfort films. It's just a 
just a fun, just just a fun time in this. Just I forget her last name, but it's got a uh, Ao from the Bear and Team and Team Mayhem. Uh, she voiced April O'Neil in that. Um, she also had a very good letterbox uh, review. I don't know if you see this that like oh. she saw Empire Strikes Back finally. She's like, and again, there's no way. This is a joke. There's no way you go. But she was all like, y'all did not prepare me for how fucked up uh, old Yoda looks. I've only seen Baby Yoda, and this guy's washed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's great. Um, but but these two, uh, Ao and then um, Rachel Sonnet, they used to do like. Um, like YouTube stuff before. Oh, I didn't know they worked um, together before. And yeah. I've seen like some of their some of their little short things, and like they're very funny together. Mm-hmm. So when I was like, "Oh, they're doing a movie together!" Hell yeah, sign mm-hmm. me up, baby! I'm so excited for this. All right, that's bottoms. I'm looking forward to it as well. Uh, Lynch Oz. Okay, somebody explain to me what the fuck this is. Uh, I should have looked it up while we were so, talking at some point. From, from my understanding, it is a documentary about David Lynch's obsession with, with the Wizard, Wizard of Oz. Oz. Yeah, because it pops up in all of his stuff, especially Wild at Heart, right, as yeah, we yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> But yeah. So is it a, wait, so is it a documentary? Yeah. Yes. Oh. A documentary goes over the rainbow to explore this technicolor through line in Lynch's work. So I think it's probably just a, an analysis huh. of David Lynch's love for... It's a theatrical Lynch's video thoughts. essay. Yeah. <laughs> That's the vibes I get, which okay. I'm in. Okay. <laughs> Love David Lynch. Love Wizard of Oz. Love that he loves Wizard of Oz. It's something, that's for sure. You might even say it's Toto. I don't know why that came to mind from that movie, but uh, Wild at Heart, pretty good. Check it out. What the fuck is the retirement plan? This is that Nicolas Cage movie where he's like a beach bum. And then his granddaughter seems like, Grandpa, I need you to do a big kill. And he's like, I love killing. And then he just does a John Wick. I'm in. It's got Ron yeah. Perlman in it, right? Ron Perlman, oh. yeah. Funny stuff. Mm-hmm. I still need to watch that. I think that that Nicolas Cage movie from last month, The Sympathy for the Devil or whatever, I think that is up That's for streaming, yes, I saw that. Yeah. I need to watch that one. I need to watch <laughs> he, it. I do. <laughs> and where he kidnaps fucking what's his bucket from Suicide Squad because he's on his the the Rick Flag guy. Oh. He's like trying to get to his pregnant wife and Nicolas Cage is like, I'm your pregnant wife now. <laughs> Looks fantastic. Okay. <laughs> Strays. Which is a movie where uh, some dogs uh, are voiced by Will Ferrell and... Jamie Foxx. Jamie Foxx. It's like Secret Life of Pets, but they say fuck. Mm. Very this funny. is produced by Phil Lord and Chris Miller. Okay. So that makes me have some hope that it might be fine, but Maybe. like... I, conceptually, it's Conceptually, it's, it's not inspiring. No, I hate this trailer so much. <laughs> and every time it plays, I'm like... Ugh. <laughs> like it's a fun, like it's a fun idea for like a short, you know? Sure. Like yeah. like an innocent dog around all these like gross adult humor things and him be like, "Huh, I'm a dog." Like that's that's a that's silly. Yeah. 90 minutes though. Like that's <laughs> that's challenging. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna skip this. So one. you're not gonna go to the early screen that they're showing at the Alamo? Are they really doing that? They're doing an early. It's oh. a, they called it a hump day screening. Oh, Christ. Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> Gran Turismo, based on a true story. This movie yeah, looks I like bet. the stupidest thing. I know we just talked about strays, but this movie. <laughs> I think this going to be fine. It's going to be a movie. Well, sure, but. The uh, way they're marketing what if it is I insufferable. It's by the director of Chappie. Yeah, I know. Neil Blanc is not it. I saw that last movie he made, or at least clips of it, and that looked rough. What was it called? Uh, It was like Demonic. Oh, yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, I watched yeah. it. That was awful. Yeah, I heard that movie <laughs> that was, was horrible. terrible. <laughs> I was just curious as to how, how bad it was, and I don't even. I do not remember. I just remember being like, oh, that's awful. Yeah, this like, not even fun bad. <laughs> I don't know who this movie is for, but I hope they like it. <laughs> um, dads who liked Ford versus Ferrari and wanted good movie, to though. share something with their Ford son. Ford versus Ferrari was surprisingly good. Yeah. I will give it that for a movie that I should have zero interest in. <laughs> but I think it's just because, like, I've never been into, like, these realistic 
like simulator kind of video games, like the Gran Turismo, the Maddens. It's like it's like, very different, but yes. Well, like they're both like it's football, but real. Oh, I get what you're saying. It's it's like there's no like there's no mega mushroom to make you big. You know, that's what I'm. As you know, (laughs) I'm almost positive (laughs) if in Gran Turismo there's not a there's not a blue shell. I would have been much more interested. There's some Madden New Game Plus stuff. Oh, oh, crap. (laughs) After you finish the story mode and win the Super Bowl, (laughs) you get the blue beetle outfit and then you gotta reach your sword. Yeah, then you gotta fight fight Bane. (laughs) Oh, no. Uh, so that's August, folks. That's the, that's the end of the movie summer. Movie summer 2K23. Ooh. I already miss it. Yeah, it was a good time. Big big time movies. I like the having been at something big to watch every week, pretty much. Um, and we're getting into big spooky fall. Ooh. I love spooky fall. <laughs> Is there some horror franchise coming back that I don't Probably. That I haven't thought of for years? Five, um, Nights, Five at Nights at Freddy's. Freddy's. <laughs> I remember I saw a tweet that that movie's three hours long, and I refuse no to believe way. that. I refuse no to believe that. <laughs> Uh, it's got Peter Malark in it. That's true. He's gonna he's, uh, he's gonna paint himself as a tree to <laughs> avoid f- f- well, fuzzy. Well, he decorated the cakes, George. That's true. So. That's true. That makes sense. <laughs> that I equipped mean, him with that set of true. skills. That's true. Jesus. <laughs> well, Ryan, where can people find you? If you go to letterboxcom slash piece, that is me. You can check out my review of the. Charlotte's Web. Charlotte's Web. <laughs> I watched that recently because I was like, I remember being a child and being like, wow, that's really sad. And then I watched it as an adult and I was like, there's a lot more musical numbers in this, but man, this is still really fucking sad. Uh, it's just a bummer. I Because like, <laughs> like, like everything about it is just like, I don't want to be killed. I'm a pig. Uh-huh. Fair enough. That's horrible. <laughs> I don't like that. <laughs> What the hell? I mean, you knew what you were getting into. I know. <laughs> uh, Carrie, where can folks find uh, you? You can find me on letterbox.com forward slash Carrie, K-A-R-R-I-E. Uh, I always be reviewing some bunk ass shit, <laughs> so tune in. I have had a, I have Fridays off, so I've been watching a lot more movies lately. Oh, nice. Yeah. What did I see last? I saw... I saw a I saw Lost Boys. I saw that. Yeah, I wasn't Ooh, a fan of that. Like I the saw Lost The Boys. Last Matinee, which is a Spanish uh, Al Morir La Matinee, which is a Spanish. It's trying to be a Jalo movie, oh. but yeah, I thought it was not. It wasn't very great. If you yeah. didn't like The Lost Boys, I would recommend Near Dark because that is everything I wanted Lost Boys okay. to be. Because that is eighties motorcycle leather jacket. What was it? What did you say? Near, Near Dark. Oh. It's very, very yeah. Good I haven't movie. seen that one either. 1987. I did love. I did really like the Lost Boys. So. Yes. It will is... that? Will I then hate Near Dark? No, it's just <laughs> it's just a more serious take it's on that. Got Bill Paxton. Hmm. Hmm. Lost Boys has Diane Weist. That Lance Henriksen. Yeah, that one has Lance Henriksen. I like Lance Henriksen, but I love Diane Weist. That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> Uh, you can find me at jcruzoliver26 on Twitter and on Letterboxd as we were discussing my... Uh, X. Uh, X, sorry. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm one of those... Oh, sorry. You didn't know I'm one of those guys. <laughs> I forgot that that happened. And I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> it's like, why did Ryan just say X? <laughs> hey. That's a dumb move, huh? <laughs> Not to get political. <laughs> Not to get political. <laughs> it's pretty stupid. But maybe, maybe with your website, that's like one of the most defining social media things. Like in the last ten years, since social media has been a thing, to just X is just a really dumb fucking move. <laughs> Something that kind of screams like "don't." Like, yeah, eh. I understand. <laughs> I understand. Wanting to now click on this. I understand yeah. wanting to name your social media website after your favorite movie, Jason X. But like, don't do it, man. That's a bad choice. Well, until next time. Bye bye. <laughs>